What's going on everyone? Today we have the 2020 Chevrolet Colorado ZR2 Bison. The ZR2 is already off-road capable and super bad, but this Bison brings it up a whole nother level. I'm gonna give you a detailed look at the exterior, we're gonna look at the interior, and we're gonna go for a test drive. And I wanna know, is this the baddest mid-size truck that you can buy? Let's get started. Now right off the bat, I wanna thank you for watching, and I wanna thank Britain Chevrolet in Greenville, Texas for providing this ZR2 Bison. They were super generous to let me show it to you guys. If you're in the DFW area, please be sure to check them out or check them out online. I'll put their information in the description below. Now taking a look at all the exterior features on this ZR2 Bison Edition, there is a lot to cover. The Bison Edition alone is $5,750 and it's actually a collaboration with American Expedition Vehicles and there's some specific parts to this Bison. So first of all, the ZR2 is going to give you a 3.5 inch wider front and rear track including a 2 inch taller suspension lift. Up front is going to give you a unique hood with a black insert, a completely different front fascia, halogen projector headlights, It'd be nice to see LEDs but you could easily swap those in. And then you'll get the Bison specific flow through Chevrolet lettering grille up front. This front bumper is even different for the Bison with a better approach angle even though it is slightly less than the regular ZR2. And then you'll get fog lights with the Bison edition as well unlike the regular ZR2 and there's still going to be an aluminum skid plate on all ZR2s right below that for the radiator and oil pan. Of course this has the off-road suspension and appearance. You get the segment exclusive Multimatic dynamic suspension damping system and segment exclusive front and rear locking differentials plus strong cast iron control arms. There's even more skid plates here. You get a transfer case skid plate, a rear differential skid plate, fuel tank skid plate, and even functional rock sliders which we don't have on ours but those will be installed but the ZR2 gets the rock sliders which is nice to know as well and the Bison gets these specific 17 inch aluminum wheels with 265 65 series tires those are 31 inch Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac tires and this Bison gives you really massive specific wheel fender flares they're really large they stand out more than the regular ZR2 and even in the back you get a modified black bumper for better departure angle but there's no steps like the regular Colorado to help with that departure angle. The ZR2 Bison gives us 8.9 inches of ground clearance which is good but not great for a vehicle of this capability. It'd be nice to see a little bit more but you still get nice approach and departure angles. Now in the back you still get a power lockable and easy lift and lower tailgate so it doesn't slam down. You get a spray in bed liner with the ZR2 logo which is nice. It is a durable looking bed liner. You've got four tie down hooks, one in each corner and, it's, and this is the 5 foot 2 inch bed and with this suspension it's not going to be as good for payload but it's 1,223 pounds of payload with this V6. Now hopping into the front seats with this ZR2 Bison being the top of the food chain for the Colorado, you get power leather seats. They're also heated. This includes two-way power lumbar, the seat tilt adjustment and movement, but the actual reclining function is manual. The seats do have some decent cushioning to them. I would like to see maybe a little bit more bolstering, but you shouldn't really have any trouble fitting in these seats at all. And at 5'9", I've still got quite a bit of room above my head with the seat not even all the way down. The cool thing about these seats is that they are leather and they do have the Bison AEV, American Expedition Vehicles badge, embroidered right into the headrest. And the seats themselves look pretty nice. They've got stitching on the sides. The cushioning around them is pretty good as well. Like I said, maybe just a little bit more bolstering, but still the seats look nice and the embroidering is pretty cool. Another cool thing that is really nice is you get a leather steering wheel, of course, but this is also heated. It is manual tilt and telescoping with a decent range of motion, so that works for me. All right, now taking a look at the inside of the Bison. Remote start is standard. It still has the soft material on the key fob, similar key fob to what you've seen on some others, and you actually get a physical key. Now this isn't going to be quite as detailed as other Colorado videos to be brief in here. If you want to see that, I'll put those links in the description. But the upper material is hard if you like to rest your arm up there. But you get a soft, probably a durable rubber material right here. A good grab handle, little storage cubby down below, little storage cubby there, and a kind of a small bottle holder down here. Now right over here you've got your lighting controls and then you've got your off-road or your four-wheel drive controls right here. Now there is an actual dedicated off-road mode if you just press that in you'll see that on there. 
and then you still have your too high for high for low and the automatic function which is awesome so if you have it in automatic it will automatically shift into four wheel drive as needed which is really handy in some off and on slippery dry situations i had that in a vehicle and it was really nice to have so you didn't have to constantly be shifting then you got your trailer brake controller up here now at first glance the interior is going to look very similar to other colorados because it is we still have the Bose speaker system. There's a little storage bin up there. You've got a heated leather wrap steering wheel. The heating button is right here. All the controls that you need, four spoke design, got this soft material on here, little sport grips as well. Then we have our physical gauges in here and our digital display as well, which shows you a fair amount of information. I showed you quite a bit of that in the other Colorado, but trip computer, music, nav, phone, and any settings you wanna change as well. Now we get the eight inch screen right here with a couple large air vents next to it. You do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard. You even have Wi-Fi. And when we go back, as you can see, everything is pretty clear and easy to read. You have some nice color options on here as well. We have Sirius XM. Navigation is optional equipment and a Bose speaker system is optional. And in a small cab like this, it really does uh, boom quite a bit. We have the Bose speaker system in here which is a seven speaker system. As you can see, you can go to your camera straight from your screen without shifting, and you have dynamic lines for backing up, and then you've got a trailering line. So you can still see your bumper, but you have a hitch line to guide you right back up to your hitch, or right back up to your trailer. So that can be really handy. It's nice that you still have physical controls. You even got little rubber um, parts on these dials, which is nice. Same with the climate controls. Now this is not dual zone, this is single zone, but it is automatic. So fan speed over here, temperature over there, controls in the middle, and you can have it on an automatic setting if you want. Then right below that, we have our rocker switches for more of our controls. You've got traction control obviously here, and this is lit up. I just locked the rear differential, so you can lock that just with the push of a button in two wheel drive, four wheel drive, either way. And then this is to, ro to lock your front differential. So this is pretty awesome this is one thing that sets it apart from other off-road vehicles being able to lock both front and back in order to lock the front you have to be in four low and of course your hazards button you've got your trailering tow haul mode downhill descent and your cargo light i'd like to see kind of a, a crawl control uphill crawl control type thing uh which would be nice to see but honestly i don't know if you need it in this vehicle then you have your heated seat buttons and i like how you can do your bottom and your back or just your back and those are three tier as well for you and your passenger, plus a little storage bin in the middle there. And then right below that, we have an SD card slot, two USB ports, an auxiliary port, and a 12 volt power outlet over there. And you've got the storage bin where you can put your phone or store any kind of items you want. Same cup holders, they are a little bit on the skinny side, but you could probably take this rubber liner out if you wanted. Nice solid shifter right here. You can even go into a low setting as well. This is leather wrapped. We even have wireless charging, wireless charging pad, or just a storage pad right there. Back here, we've got a decently wide armrest for a truck of this size. Go ahead and open that up, and you've just got a, you know, a pretty deep area. It's nice to see an automatic dimming rear view mirror. Simple light controls. You even have a sunglass holder up there. The passenger gets a grab handle to get up and in here. And then in the back, you've got a manual sliding rear window. Now, as we take a look at the back seat, it does have pretty decent space. And in, especially for a mid-sized truck, you still get the leather seats and a fold down armrest back here. Now, another nice feature is you can, one, you can move these headrests, but you can also pull down a 60-40 split and you've got a little bit of space for some storage back here. And you can pull that lever and lift up the seat bottom and then you've got storage running along the whole entire bottom so if you're going to be hauling some stuff back here and need a little extra storage you got it now that i've hopped in you can see my seating position behind myself at five foot nine really not bad at all for a mid-sized truck decent foot space as well you do have a hump in the middle but you've got this nice floor liner uh, in here in the front so that is really nice to keep some dirt and crud especially if you're off-roading off of your carpet then right in the middle, you've got two more USB ports and a 12 volt power outlet. Now for the ZR2 Bison, you might be wondering what's different under the hood to make it stand out from the regular Colorado. Well, if I can find the switch, the answer is nothing. It's actually the same powertrain as you've seen in the other Colorados, but that's okay because it does have pretty good power. This direct injected 
3.6 liter V6 is going to give you over 300 horsepower at 308 horsepower and 275 pound-feet of torque paired with an 8-speed automatic transmission. Now miles per gallon is not great at 16 city, 18 highway, but you can't really expect that with a vehicle so dedicated to off-road capability. Now if you're really looking for more torque, you can get a 2.8 liter Duramax diesel, which I did test drive before. If you want to see that, I'll put a link in the description below. That'll give you 369 pound-feet of torque, but no matter and better fuel efficiency. But no matter which engine you get with the ZR2, because of its setup and its capability with the suspension and all that, towing max is out at 5,000 pounds either way. All right, we are on the road in the ZR2 Bison. Gonna go for a little test drive. Now, one thing I've gotta be upfront with you about is we can't go off-roading. Uh, obviously, this is a dealership vehicle. We're very thankful to Britain Chevrolet for providing it for us. Well, let's go ahead and go for a little drive. Um, I'll try to compare it a little bit to that Chevy Colorado that I had recently on the channel. And right off the bat, the first impression, you're not gonna notice much of a difference um, it's a little bit of a softer little bit more of a bouncier suspension which I actually like one thing is you're gonna get a little bit more tire noise in here with the type of tires that we got but it's still a quiet truck and that's one thing that I talked about with the other Colorado is that it's a quiet truck and we're on a really uneven bumpy road right now uh, you know, a lot of you that buy this are still going to be driving on city roads as well and you're not going to have any trouble or any complaints really. The steering feel is just still very similar to the regular Colorado. It does have a decent steering input uh, for a mid-size pickup for sure, so it's really not bad. It's In terms of weight of the steering, it's probably medium. It's not light, but it's not heavy either, so it's still easy and fairly effortless to drive and wow that little patch back there has some pretty deep washboards and this was just smooth right over the top i'm sure the wheels or the tires have a big uh, thing to do with that now we are on some gravel and hopefully it doesn't move me around too much with this point of view camera angle here and give you get you sick but kind of just want to feel what it's like on some obviously some gravel some rougher terrain and it's still really quiet going over the gravel we're not going fast I don't want to fling rocks up at this brand new vehicle but uh it's still really smooth now I have not had the opportunity to test out the uh, the bison for a press vehicle standpoint you can see that you needed some pretty decent clearance to get through that and this there was no trouble with this um, it's not wet and muddy and we can't go anywhere wet and muddy with the dealership vehicle but uh still and as i was saying i haven't had the opportunity but my buddy uh, my good friend forrest from forrest auto reviews he has had the bison and he did go off road so be sure to check that out i'll put a link in the description below now honestly with everything that this colorado offers this ZR2 Bison has got to be among the most impressive and baddest versions of a mid-sized truck that you can buy. I mean, obviously there is the TRD Pro, there's the Nissan Pro 4X, there's, there's the Gladiator version. Um, the Ford Ranger has their off-road version, but none of them are quite like this and just as decked out and customized as the ZR2 Bison. Okay, now we're gonna get on some dry pavement here. Get on it a little. Smooth acceleration. It's definitely smooth. It's a smooth powertrain right off the bat. And you've got over 300 horsepower, which is great. That's more than anything else uh, that I've tested recently in the midsize class and still decent torque. So partial throttle, and it responds. It's good, I, uh, you know, in just a short test drive, you get some smooth, smooth impressions with this powertrain. And even at a higher speed, maybe you can hear a little bit of the road noise, but it's really actually pretty pleasant. It's still a quiet vehicle, I'm, I'm still impressed with it. Now the brakes on the Colorado do a really nice job. 
obviously I haven't had any emergency type situations, but it's got a good feel to it. Um, it's, it's honestly very responsive. It's a little touchy maybe compared to some vehicles that I'm used to. And then let's get on it some. It's got a pretty nice little sound to it for a V6 as well. I'm sure a lot of you would want a V8. And speaking of engines, I did actually get to test drive the Duramax version of the ZR2 a couple years ago for the 2018 model. And that has a lot of torque. So you just barely get into the throttle. And then once those RPMs are about 1500 or even 2000, it just pushes you in the back. I mean, it's a, a, a torque monster. So if that's your thing and you want better efficiency, definitely go for the diesel. But this V6 will do well for a lot of people. Considering the other engines around, you cannot complain about the power output from this V6 when you're looking at the other mid-sized trucks. Now, the ride comfort, we're on another, this road looks smooth, but it's really not. It's, it's actually kind of bumpy. And uh, the comfort in here is good. I think this soft suspension does a nice job of smoothing everything out, which you gotta expect, especially when you're on some rough, hey, or rough you know, road and you're going pretty fast, like kind of desert running type stuff. There's no complaints with the comfort. It's gonna feel uh, kind of stiff, you know, a little bouncy, a little jittery, which is gonna come with the off-road suspension, as well as just the fact that this is a truck. It's a body on frame, fully box frame as well. Now, I guess the biggest takeaway, the biggest downfall to the ZR2 is its towing and payload, but that's just how it goes with uh, an off-road geared vehicle like this. Even the Ford Raptor, suffers quite a bit with towing and payload compared to the other version so if that's your main thing you're gonna want to go with the other Colorado which is quite capable but if you want to get off the beaten path this is definitely your vehicle so is this the baddest mid-size truck that you can buy this 2020 ZR2 Bison really steps it up a notch probably one of the most off-road capable trucks that there is stock that you can buy a big thanks again to Britain Chevrolet let me know down below what you think Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out some of these other videos. Subscribe for weekly videos. Have a great rest of your day.